Looks like we're live now, dude. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Craig Cottle, director of Nature Line School. We are live again at Show, Show Faith Promotions. And we're trying to figure out again how to make sure that we see your uh, comments so that I can chat with you online while we're here. Check this out. I've got a table full of knives. I've got table, I got knives over here, I got knives over there. We got all kinds of stuff we're going to show off tonight. We're pretty excited about the fact that we are now an ambassador for LT Right Handcrafted Knives. So that's what we wanted to do this show about tonight was to take an opportunity to showcase a lot of what it is that they have to offer. Uh, what I've done setting this up is I created a blog piece. So you can go to our website at naturereliance.org. Again, that is Nature Reliance. Check it out. Naturereliance.org. The top blog there details some of the, the links to LT Wright Handcrafted Knives. As well as you look down into the blog piece, I have a list of all these knives here and the links directly to them. So we're going to talk about them, but if you're interested in any of this stuff, then you can take a look at that and get an, a, a very direct link to it. So, uh, hey, Todd Gibson, what's up? A lot of TT right knives there. Yeah, that is true, my friend. Good to hear from you. I hadn't seen you in a while. Um, Andrew's here. Bam is here. Clark's here. Good to see you guys. Olivia. Hey, what's up, Olivia? How's that brand new niece of yours doing over there? Shut up, Andy. I see you and your sharp pointy things out there. So, uh, good to have you all with us. So, yeah, we got a, a lot of sharp pointy things here. We're going to pull each one of these out of the sheaths and give you a brief idea of what we have. But again, I want to emphasize, go to that blog piece on our website and you can check out uh, all the links for this. So here, here's how this came about. I have in mind a design for a knife and these knives right here will probably give you an idea where that's going. But that's a secret that will have to come out a little bit later. So I contacted my friends at LT Wright Handcraft uh, She's rotten, Olivia says. Hey, Eric Van Zant. Hey, Mr. Carpenter. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Um, I, I talked to LT and Mikey Henniger at LT Right Handcrafted Knives about that design. And while we were in the middle of the conversation, they, they uh, approached the subject of Nature Reliance School, myself in particular, becoming an ambassador for LT Right Knives, which is not a problem. Let me explain why. This knife right here is... An LT Wright Genesis that I have had, I'm going to try to get my technical difficulties square away over here. This right here is my LT Wright Genesis that I've had for a number of years. Uh, I love this knife. Uh, it, I have beat it half to death. I have worked it. I have a, not abused it because I don't abuse my tools, but I have used it quite a bit. And I just simply love it. And it fits good in the hand. It works good. I put a lot of work through it. And it is, again, made by LT Right Handcrafted Knives. So anything that I can do with those guys, I'm a big fan of. And so uh, it was just kind of icing on the cake that they asked me to be an ambassador because I was somewhat of an ambassador before they even asked me to do. Tim Carpenter, are those knives made for smashing and breaking and smashing? You got that right. Does everybody know who this is right here, Everyday Tactical Vids? Uh, Tim and I were out in Vegas at SHOT Show together. Tim, you, you have to put that video up. You've got to put that video up. Check out Everyday Tactical Vids and, uh, and for all the fun stuff he does over there. But uh, he's, he's got a pretty interesting video he might put up someday. So uh, thanks for that, man. I needed that laugh. Olivia says that she's rotten. I see. By the pictures I see a little Miss Violet, I believe that she is rotten. So, hey, Jared Speck, good to see you. I'm glad you're here. So, let's go ahead and get into these knives. I don't want to be here all evening because a lot of these are the same thing over and over and over again, but there's very specific features to each one of them, too. The things that's the same is they're high quality, craftsmanship, fantastic. They're sharp as razors. So, I'll do my best try to not say that over and over again, but probably will want to just because they are of high quality and they are so sharp. But uh, if you'll notice in the blog piece, or if you look at it later, whichever you do, I've got them in a specific order, and I've got these knives in that order too. So the first one is uh, what I want to have here is the biggest. So I'm going to go from the biggest to the smallest. 
right here, this is the SOSPES, if I'm saying that right, Latin word, which means unharmed, safe, and sound. This is a collaborative agreement between William Myers and LT Wright. Uh, fantastic blade. It's it is not a knife, it is a knife, and it could easily be a chopping tool. It is a one knife solution, big knife if that's what you're into. Uh, that way you have a tool that's going to be doing larger tasks, and it's got a point such that you could do smaller tasks as well. Uh, it is ten and a half inches long overall, and that is 01 tool steel. So uh, you've got what you've got there. Uh, fantastic blade, huge. Uh, big, big fan of that blade if you're looking for a one tool option. So next on the list is, check this out. These, this is my Genesis here. Here is a brand spanking new Genesis. This is a Scandi grind. These knives, as you can tell, in my hand work exceptionally well. They have three rivets in them. They have a fisheye in them as well if you want to put a lanyard in. I've never been a fan of lanyards, so I've never utilized them. Uh, I prefer Kydex. You can get a Kydex sheath for some of these knives from LT Wright, so check them out on that. And this is the LT Wright Genesis, again, my card handle. And uh, overall length, let me make sure I get on my data right so I don't miss anything. Overall length, 9 inches. Sharpened edge is 4.25 inches. The steel is A2. And I talked to... Uh, Mrs. LT today, and she noted that on one side of the blade you'll see LT's mark. On the other side is an A on this one. I think, if I understood things correctly, that is an indicator when you pick these knives up that it is an A2 steel. So, uh, Scandi Grind, this is my Carta or Desert Ironwood. One of the things that came up uh, with this is the ability for me to pass on some savings to you all. So when I was talking to LT and those folks, they said, hey, just give them a call. If you're interested in any of these things now or down the road, it's not just tonight, but now or down the road, you want a knife, go to LT, contact them, say Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School sent you, and that way they're going to hook you up with a deal. So uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll like what you get there. Uh, I've been, again, a big fan, if you can't tell. Um, let's see. Next on the list here is our buddy, our friend, I can get my notes pulled up. Again, I want to make sure I get everything right. This is the GNS Scandi. Uh, this blade, look at it in relationship to my Genesis. So what you have here is a little bit sharper point. It's still a Scandi. You've got uh, some different sizing option in the handle, so it's just going to be a little bit more secure if that's what you like. And fantastic blade. The, if I c remember correctly, the price point on this blade is uh, it's just incredibly affordable. Let me pull that up real quick. Um, yeah, the GNS. Yeah, this is this is a hundred forty nine dollar knife for here. That's incredible. Uh, and the prices that I have listed on my website are the knives without their sheaths because I didn't want to assume that you wanted leather or Kydex. So I just put the price of the knife itself up. So there you go. Fantastic blade, the GNS Scandi. Now this one right here, I actually went, this is the reason I called them today, is that, are we getting comments? Because I'm not seeing any more comments. Maybe I lost them again. That's what I'm afraid of. If you're commenting, I'm not seeing your comments. I'm just seeing that people joined. So I'll check that out, see what we're seeing here. Yeah, we're getting some more. Yeah, we're good. All right, so next on the list is I went to the website and tried to find this knife. Uh, this is the LT Wright Bushcrafter knife. Now, for years, I have been selling through Nature Reliance School the Bushcrafter HCs with a Kydex sheath, and we've sold a, a blooming million of them. But this knife is a little bit hardier version of it, and one of the things that I learned when I was on with, uh, uh, with uh, LT Wright's folks on there you go on the phone today is that this one is sold through dealers they don't actually sell this one on their website so they have a list of dealers there's some fine reputable people that you can work with uh, we did some work with uh, blade hq out in vegas at shot show those guys are real friendly guys and i looked and they had this blade on their website so that's something to look up um, olivia's asking 
naturealliance.org to order, right? No, Olivia, thank you for asking that question. That's a good question. Uh, the way you order these is to go to LT Wright's website. You can click, click the link that I have in the blog for this. Go to naturealliance.org to see our blog. The blog says, hey, LT Wright ambassadorship or something of that nature. Click on that and you'll see all the links for every one of these knives and that's how you order. You can order through the website or you can call them directly. Again, tell them that I sent you Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School and they're going to hook you up with a deal and a half. So uh, check it out. Real, real good people. Uh, as I said in the blog piece, uh, I've worked with a bunch of knife companies. Um, when I determined I wanted to design my own knife and go my own way and do that, uh, there was only one company I wanted to go with and that was LT Wright. That's why I'm going with them. And this has just worked out incredibly well that uh, we're now an ambassador for them. So moving on after the Bushcrafter, uh, which, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you, on this Bushcrafter, uh, what we have here is seven and a half inches. The sharpened edge is, sharpened edge is three inches. The steel is A2. We got a full, no, this is a scanty grind on this one. And um, let's see, make sure I've got everything right. Yeah, I think I'm looking at that right. If I got my notes right. So that's the Bushcrafter. Fantastic little blade. Those Bushcrafter HCs that we sold has a saber grind. This is a little bit different grind, but they are uh, they're workhorses. So with that said, what we have next is the next gen. This is a little version of the Genesis. Okay. So here's the Genesis that I've been utilizing for years, and here's the next gen. Now this knife right here is seven and a half inches long and three inches on the sharpened edge. This is a full flat grind made out of A2 steel. Again, this is desert ironwood, micarta, possible as well. Two pins, fisheye, uh, fantastic small blades, much smaller than the Genesis. Uh, I think this, again, would be a workhorse to do anything and everything you wanted to do in bushcrafting. Uh, but that, that brings up a good subject as far as the way my approach is to bushcrafting. I'm a two-tool type of guy, meaning I'm a big fan of having a, a knife that I can do a lot of work with, and then I always have some sort of axe or something of that nature to do the larger task. Uh, not that these small knives couldn't do larger tasks, but I think, uh, hey, Chris Lindsay, you carry the next gen every day. It's a hoss of a knife. Hey, Chris is a good guy. He's a good tracking friend of ours. Uh, yeah, I didn't know you had this. I had never seen this one until I got this one in the mail. Fantastic little blade. I'm glad you said that, buddy. Um, yeah, these are great blades. Uh, LT Wright is good blades. I haven't had that one in my hand until today, so I started doing a little bit of work with it today just to get a feel for it. I did a little work with all of these this morning. Uh, that's what a tough job I've got, right? I get to play with knives every day, stuff like that. So thanks again for joining us, Chris. Uh, so what is next on the list? We have, check out this this is just the cutest, this is just the cutest little knife. They call it the Bush Baby. And this is going to be real similar to that Bushcrafter HC. Uh, this little guy is six and three quarters inches long overall, two and seven eighths inch on the blade itself. 1075 high carbon steel, much like it is, same, same blade type that you have on the Bushcrafter HC, which is larger than this. And then this has that two-step patina on it that is the coolest that I've seen in a very long while. It's almost got a camouflage look to it, which I prefer. I like a lot of camo. And uh, my experience with the Bushcrafter HCs, which this is, has the same coating on it, is that that's going to work for quite a while. And then if it, it's, there's a certain amount of it's going to stay. But even when it fades, it still has that good camo look and good coverage so that your knife is going to be protected and all those good things. So uh, those are some good features right there on the Bush Baby. All right, now getting in something a little bit different here. What we have here is a Kydex sheath. You'll notice this button right here, which allows it to stay more secure. I pull that down once I pull that down and I can pull this out. And what we have here is the Stealth. Check this out. Nice little thumb groove right here. Uh, this blade right here is six and a half inches and the sharpened edge is 2.75 inches, made of D2 steel, saber grind, has a carbon fiber handle. I was reading them on this, um, on this handle today. This handle is a very particular style of material 
that uh, as far as I can tell, not anybody else is using other than LT and these guys a lot. So this is a fantastic little knife. Uh, what they have it shown for on the website, which I think would work very well for that, is a, a secure way of holding a knife on a neck knife. So you can put some paracord on here, put more paracord on there so you have a small survival kit if you want to, and then you have a nice neck knife to do whatever type of work that you want to do with it. And again, that is the Stealth. Fantastic little blade. All right, now, last but not least, as far as these knives is concerned, is I'm trying to get back to see if we have any questions going on. Tony Banks, hey, Tony, has talked to you in forever. Good to see you. I'm glad you joined us. So, um, see if I've missed anything. How am I doing there? You see anything? Yeah? I'm curious about the handles and the sheets. Those are like some pretty okay. good leather work. Yeah, let's talk about the handles and the sheets. Almost every one of these that I've shown, uh, other than this last one, the Stealth, these are some variation of a micarta handle. Micarta handle, if you're not familiar with micarta, is basically a compressed fabric. And, and when you hear that the first time, when I heard it the first time, because I grew up with knives that had handles on them that looked like this. You know, some variation of a deer antler or some sort of wood or something of that nature. And so the first time I saw these micarta handles, I thought, whatever. I'm not a big fan of that micarta handle. I don't know that I think too much about that until I actually got some and then started using them. And you can see this knife I've been using for somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think, eight years and it goes out the door with me every day. I don't wear it on me every day, but it goes in my pack with me every day. And you can see, the I keep showing these because these are the two same knives. This is the brand new Genesis, and this is the one that I've been carrying for several years. Just a little bit different coloration, and uh, I haven't done anything to that handle at all, nothing. I haven't done a thing to that handle to do anything different to it, and it's weathered well, and it works exceptionally well. So other than that, uh, as far as the, the uh, sheaths that are concerned, these are leather sheaths. You'll notice that they're not just one size fits all. There's a bunch of different sizes in here. Uh, these are fantastic. And uh, what we have here, I'm not a fan of the dangler, but I know a lot of people are. These are very easy to take off. But uh, my style of wearing, I like to wear it right on the belt. And... Uh, if you are the type of person that likes to have it dangled and then you can tie it off to your leg, then you can do that as well. And that, that brings up another good topic, too. I nor, hey, Matt Drake, sorry I'm late. Is the knife you designed in there somewhere? No, not yet, dude. It's going to look something like one of these. So that will come later. So uh, the, these are knives that I, some of these I've had for over 30 years that uh, I'm going to utilize to design my knife. Um, JRE sheaths are good. Yeah, you're right, Todd. These these are fantastic, fantastic sheaths. Uh, the reason I brought that up is I let's say for example that I don't care for this. Okay, this is another reason I like LT and these guys is because they make fine quality blades, but they make a bunch of different styles, and that way you can find a style that you like, and that's part of what comes about with us being an ambassador for LT Right Knives is that. If you come to one of our classes, then these knives are going to be there. And that way you can take it out for the weekend, take it out for the week, whatever class that we're teaching. And that way you can utilize it, practice with it. Uh, if it breaks, they want to know that. But I can tell you right now, it ain't, it's not going to break. So you can, you, can, you can test drive these basically is what you're going to do. And the sheaths, again, some of the knives, and I'm not real clear on all of them, which ones you can or cannot get Kydex, but you can always get a maker to make you a Kydex sheath. Uh, danglers, belt, they have ferro rod loops in most of them. The small guy does not, and I'll get to that knife in just a second. But you'll see that we have these ferro rod loops in these knives as well. That adds to the ability for it to be a bu good bushcrafting knife. Matt Drake, you excited? You excited about my knife? What do you see it, dude? You're going to be real excited. So, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Bama. That's uh, good stuff. A lot of good she's here. Kydex is good, and we have one more knife. Let's pull this up. Make sure I got all the specs right on this little guy. This is this this thing's sweet. So what we have here, um, this little blade is five and five eighths inches, two and a half inches on the sharpened edge, 
and has a flat grind on it, as you can see. Um, it has a hand peened brass pins, much like some of these other wet, uh, tools are. And again, it has a regular hip sheath or comes in kydex. And this blade, I hadn't seen this one until now either. Let me make sure I get the name right for you. This is the Patriot. Yeah, this is the Patriot. There's so many knives I can't keep up with them all. Uh, these are fantastic little tools um, to do whatever. I, I believe if you wanted to set up a Kydex sheath that could positively retain that, you can make a neck knife out of that if you wanted to. Uh, this fantastic little knife, you can wear it again on the belt, do uh, everyday tasks. It's, it's a good little EDC knife, fantastic little knife for that. So that in a nutshell is the knives that we have. So what I can recommend for you to do is to do this. Uh, again, go to the website. You can go to the website and see uh, a listing of all these, get all the detailed specs if you're interested in them. I've got prices on there. Just keep in mind that the price that I have on there is listed without a sheath because, again, I wasn't sure if people were interested in a Kydex or a leather sheath, so I just left that off. Uh, the steels are listed. Got some information on how to contact LT and those guys, and that way you can tell them, hey, Craig Cottle sent you and you have the ability to get a discount there because, again, these are fantastic blades. We've sewed, I don't know how many of those Bushcrafter HCs, and I haven't had anybody say that they've had any sort of bad issue with them. Uh, again, every knife is not made for every person. You'll find a knife that fits your hand, and LTE, Wright, and the guys are smart and that they have a handful of people that are ambassadors for them. Uh, Jason Hunt here in Kentucky is another one. Uh, he's got a good school up in Bethlehem. And um, I don't know who all else is. I think uh, Kevin from Midwest Woodcraft is an ambassador. I'm not really sure who all else is. But uh, the, the beauty of it is you go to these uh, bushcrafting circles or get-togethers or whatever. You go to a class with me, for example, or in our school, then you get your hands on a knife and you don't just have to look at it on a website. Uh, and and I'll, I'll have these with me wherever I travel. So when I'm teaching out of state, I'll have these with me. If I'm going to a library program, uh, a lot of libraries don't like me to take knives in, but uh, I'll have them with me. And that way, if you want to check them out, you can come to the truck and check them out or something of that nature because I want, I want to get these knives in people's hands so you can see how, how much high quality they are, how, how much high quality they are and how good they're going to be. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks, Todd, for bringing that up. One of the things that came up is the spines on these blades. I mean, me and Zane, my son, and I were looking at these blades earlier, and one of the things that when I pulled them out and he started feeling of them and looking at them and just checking them out, he noted how sharp the spines are because this is a good debarking tool, whether it's this little guy or you've got, and this is one of the things that I use as much as anything in my Genesis is... Uh, use the back of the spine because it's so sharp to debark or scrape a ferro rod or something of that nature and that way you've got uh, your sharp portion of your knife is saved and is used for tasks that you must use the knife for and then you can use the back for anything else that you might want to use it for. Um, Alright Thomas, they look fantastic. Bottom line, best all around blade for bushcraft, field dressing, etc. Man, I knew somebody was going to do that. That's a hard one. Oh, man. I'm going to just have to straight up go with the Genesis. Have to. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than the next gen. I think this is the next gen here. Smaller blade. But um, I, think I'd have, I, I think I'd have to go with the Genesis. That's a good question, Thomas. Um, this blade has, has done all that. You know, I had a, my, uh, I have somebody that's pretty close to me who uh, recently got back from basic and AIT training, and one of the things that kept coming up for in their training was uh, they were doing things, and their drill sergeant was one of these guys that had a chest full of medals and all that kind of good stuff. And some of the privates would be silly enough to ask the drill sergeant, are you sure about that drill sergeant? I mean, I, I don't know. And the drill sergeant would say things like, private, private, I've been there, I've done that, yeah. I mean, he's been to war. So, yeah, he knew. Well, I have been there and done that with this knife. I have skinned deer. I have skinned rabbits with it. I have bushcrafted with it. I have done survival training with it. Uh, 
Uh, I have utilized it as an index tool for tracking. Uh, I have cut up dinner around the campfire. There is nothing that I have not done with this knife. So for me and my experience, I have to say go with this one. But, but, um, you know, LT and those guys, they knew that not everybody can afford a knife that costs close to $175, $200. So they've got these knives here that are sub, some of these knives are sub $100. You can't beat that. That Bushcrafter HC's around that $100, that Benjamin, uh, you can't beat that. Uh, this, this next gen is less than that. The uh, Bush Baby, uh, these these are all knives, and, and you've got a, you've got a, a range of knives. Look on the website, going from like seventy five bucks up to you know over two hundred dollars, and so whatever your budget is, you'll find a knife. And I, I feel confident that if you put the time and effort into utilizing it, you'll be able to do what you need to do with it. So we'll take a look, make sure we're not missing any questions, and then we'll uh, we'll sign off here. So it looks good, you all. Y'all have had some really good question tonight. Have you noticed that I've missed anything, Bama? Not looking good. All right, cool, 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 cool. So here's what I would ask you to do. Um, we're, we don't do these live videos very much, so we appreciate Show Faith Promotions for taking care of us and getting this done right. If you have interest in your work, wherever it is that you work, whether you're self-employed like me or you work for somebody and you need some video work done, then check those guys out, Show Faith Promotion. Scott Moore, he's a good friend of mine. Obviously, he's behind the camera right now. Um, so check those folks out. If you're interested in classes, here's what we have coming up. We have a nature, our, our, our cornerstone class, which is uh, basic level one survival. In that class, we're going to do personal safety, how to loss proof yourself, uh, shelter building, water purification, um, wilderness and remote first aid. We're, uh, Oh, there you go. Clark says, the spines on those have thrown sparks at my strikers couldn't. There you go. Cool. When do, and John Collins is asking, when do you expect to announce your blade design? That is totally up to me. Um, some, some other night of news, and I'll get back to that survival class. Uh, my second book, second book, uh, Ultimate Wilderness Gear, comes out in July, so check that out. You can find that in bookstores everywhere. Um, so we've been doing what we need to do to promote that properly. My third book is being written right now by myself and Tracy Trimble. Um, it's going to be on expert wilderness navigation. So we've been really neck deep in, in those two projects for certain, uh, trying to get our class schedule going as well. And LT Wright and those guys, they're waiting on me. They're waiting on me to get some final things designed. And so I have, I have some of these tools that I have used for years, that I am doing some things with to make sure that they do what I want them to do, and then I'm gonna incorporate those into the design as well. I, you know, I, I kind of was concerned getting into the knife game and designing a knife. So many people had told me I needed to design my own knife, and I thought, and I, I am of the mindset that any tool is a good tool if you just have the knowledge to use it. So if you saw where I made a video a few weeks ago, if you get a, peanut, a dinner knife, you can make it work if you have the knowledge. But if you don't have a, a, a lot of knowledge or you're not comfortable or you're new, then a, then a handcrafted tool like this is going to make work so much easier for you. And even for somebody like me, it's got a fair amount of experience, actually a lot of experience. And um, then you're going to be able to take one of these tools and use it to do what it is that you need to do. Um, but, so to answer your question, it's, it's, they're waiting on me and I've got to get it designed. If everything goes well, I'm going out tomorrow to look for mushrooms and if that goes well, uh, I probably won't get it designed. If it doesn't go well, I'll probably come back early and, uh, design a knife. So that's, uh, I need a day out in the woods to do nothing but what I want to do in the woods. So that's, that's there. So Andy's asking, which one has a bigger grip than the Genesis? I got a three times glove hand. One LTU had seemed to fit perfect. I think it's the Genesis. The Genesis, hey, Andy, the Genesis is the biggest one that I that I have the last time I saw you. So that's that one right here. Uh, let me look that up for you real quick. So I can tell you what size it is. Because I can't keep it in my mind. It's a little bit bigger than Craig's hand. I don't know what that is. Overall inch, uh, overall length, nine inches, Andy. And then... Uh, the sharpened edge is 4.25, 4.25. So that's 4.75 inches on the handle. So there you go. So 
Andy comes to a lot of our classes. He's been an incredible resource for us. We've learned a lot from him, and, and I hope we've taught him some things too. Great guy to have around. Uh, we call him the Axe Man. But, Andy, I think the last time when we had that class up at Natural Bridge, this would have been the biggest LT right knife that I had in my collection at that time. So this is probably it. Um, so Chris is saying, so worth the money. My next gen feels like it'll last 100 years. I'm with you on that, brother. Uh, I love these things. They've been fantastic for me. So let me do one more thing here to make sure I'm getting all my comments. Appreciate your patience with me while we're working through this stuff because I'm not the best at it. Dave Robinson, Andy needs another knife or two or three. Dave, you know how it works. No man can have enough knives. So that's what LT Wright is here to help with. Uh, besides your own knife design, what about an axe design, Daniel? Oh, man. Hmm. Are you asking? Daniel, if you're, if you're still seeing me, Clarify your question for me. Are you talking about what not, uh, what axe that I recommend, or am I gonna am I gonna design an axe? So clarify that for clarify that for me, and then I'll answer. Mine are old BHK. You know, I had a BHK Woodsman too, Todd, and uh, I ended up uh, had that in a class. This is kind of a a, a funny story, but not. Uh, I had had that knife in class and had let dozens and dozens and dozens of people use it, and and it was just fine, no problems. I took it to one high school class. One kid utilized it to baton something. I looked away for about, you know, two seconds, and he broke the handle on it. So I actually sold that to one of our Nature Reliance School students and for next to nothing, and he put a new handle on it, and it is working like a boss. Oh, you designed an axe profile. You know, I haven't even thought about that, Daniel. Uh, I haven't even thought about doing that. So Grant's from Brooks and Bad. I don't, I don't know that I'm that cool yet, Andy. And that would be your best day in the world, wouldn't it? If I became a, uh, if I became an ambassador for them, hey man, you never know. We're we're getting there. So uh, thanks for throwing that out. Sorry, Daniel. I don't know. I haven't even thought about doing an axe before. I like the ones that I have. I use Grantsford. So. Uh, so uh, I'm a big fan of them. All right, Kevin, I don't have the Genesis, but I'm happy with my Gary Wines Bushcrafter Hunter and Overland Machete. Hope to have a Genesis soon. Kevin is a uh, Midwest Woodcraft, who I was mentioning earlier. I have the Overland Machete. I actually leave it in the toolbox of my truck, and I, I meant to get it when I got out of the truck and didn't. I left it there. Uh, fantastic blade. I did a video on that, so check that out. I also have a video out there on the Gary Wines Bushcrafter Hunter. That is a fantastic blade from LT Wright. Uh, those are two that I don't have in my possession right now. I don't have them here because I was wanting to showcase these brand new blades, but those are fantastic blades as well, so check them out. Chad and Tiffany's here. Chad or Tiffany, probably Tiffany. Tiffany, how's Violet doing? So good good that you're here, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you being here. Uh, back to the survival class. That's coming up in two weeks. Uh, check it out on the website. Um, use the code Facebook Live when you sign up, and you'll get 25% off that class. Facebook Live, you get 25% off that class for anybody and everybody that signs up. And uh, come to class. All these knives are going to be there so you can put them to use and check them out. And we'll see how that goes. Rob Gray says, never have enough knives. I agree with that, Rob. You are my kind of dude. I like that. And there you have it. Uh, other things that are coming up, uh, on the tail end of that um, Survival Level 1 class, Again, survival level one is remote first aid, personal safety, loss proofing yourself, shelter, water, food, edible plants, and uh, traps and gigs and eating bugs and all that stuff. You don't have to eat the bugs. Uh, you, we just show you how to find them and which ones are edible or not. But one of the things that we're going to do this time is we're going to tack on a very small edible plants course right at the end. So it's free to anybody that comes to that level one survival class and there's a small fee for anybody that comes in just for that class. So I had a scheduling mess up and I uh, had to readjust things. So level one starts on Friday, usually starts around 7 p.m., goes till Sunday at 2 p.m. And then from 3 to 7 on that Sunday, we're going to have that edible plants class. Um, Kevin, you do need to come down and get in one of my classes. So Kevin's a good dude. Uh, I trained with him up at Jason's place up in Bethlehem. 
Campcraft. Campcraft, check that out. They make a lot of wax canvas stuff. We're giving one of those bags away in our huge giveaway. We've got a $4,000 giveaway going on right now where we have some Bushcrafter HCs in there, some survival bows, some wax canvas from Campcraft. Check that out. That blog is on our website too. Check it out. It has all the links, YouTube channel, and all that good stuff. And Todd Gibson is saying, LT's Frontier Valley is a great small skinner and companion knife to your normal belt knife. Good stuff, Todd. I, I never had that one in my hand either. So, uh, man, they make a lot of good knives, don't they? Just straight up, they make a bunch of good knives, and I haven't had my hands on all of them yet. So, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to get into one of your classes. Todd, you're retired now, dude. I think, right? Are you retired? You said you were coming when you, when you got out of the military, so... So uh, hopefully we will see you soon, brother. Appreciate your service. Uh, we appreciate the service of everybody, all our first responders, our military personnel, as always. Uh, do what you can. If you're a fan of Nature Blind School, you should be a big fan of the military and law enforcement, uh, EMS, firefighters, and all those good folks. Support them when and where you can. Support your community with your talents and as best you can in whatever you can do. And as always with Nature Blind School, come on, join in, let's learn together.